Hey Space Lab, I'm Jake and welcome to Space. Number six. Are you scared of ghosts? I'm not. Well, I'm not scared of anything really. Well, except for ghosts. The Ghost Nebula, formerly known as Abel 39, gets its name because of the six light years across the sphere that was once the central sunlight star's outer atmosphere. What's even crazier is that the spherical shell is continually growing and Abel 39 is thought to have about half of the oxygen of our sun. Speaking of oxygen, take a deep breath and hold it. Now imagine you are floating in space without a suit on and your lungs are filled with air. Space is a vacuum, so your lungs are expanding like balloons and they can only expand so far. Once you let the oxygen out of your lungs, the vacuum of space will literally start to suck the oxygen out of your blood. At that point, you'd black out and your lifeless body would most likely start getting pulled in by the sun's gravitational field. We talk about the sun a lot in this show, and for good reason. If it were to disappear, we would fly off into space at about 64,800 miles per hour, which coincidentally is the same speed we orbit the sun, to meet our cold, horrible deaths. Interesting side note though, if the sun died, it would take a full eight and a half minutes for the last of its light to reach us. But good news, we still have the sun, and NASA has an amazing video series called Mysteries of the Sun, which covers such topics as space weather, the magnetosphere, the heliosphere, and more. So similar to some of the topics we've talked about in past episodes, except done by NASA and with a bigger budget, which is funny because I didn't think NASA had a budget anymore. Looking at you, US government. I'll throw down, me and my science friends. When the asteroid that wiped out the dinosaurs hit Earth, it sent billions of tons of rock into space. Astrobiologists have now figured out the trajectories of those debris. The most interesting aspect is the thought that these pieces of rock from Earth had life on them. And this actually brings up a theory called panspermia, which Michael talked about in his latest Ask Michael video, which you can check out right here. But the basics behind the theory is this. A meteor could have hit Earth that had some form of life on it, and from that meteor it grew into what we see today. With that in mind, it's crazy to think about a piece of our Earth floating in space, waiting to crash on that one planet, where it was just the perfect time for that meteor to create new life. While we wait for life to pop up on other planets, we can check out these amazing photos of Mars that look like illusions. Illusions! Don't forget to download the Space Lab papercraft. I did, and huh, now I have a wall of wheel of skateboards behind me. Ladies? Or check out this video of the coronal cell regions on our sun. Yesterday, April 12th, was the 51st anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's record-breaking voyage into space, and he was the first person to see Earth from space. As always, everything we talked about is linked in the description below, so check it out. And thank you guys so much for your awesome theories about dark matter. Here are a few of my favorites. And I have another question for you. What are your thoughts on the theory of panspermia? Leave a comment below. And I'm gonna leave you with this video by Melody Sheet that takes footage from Carl Sagan's Cosmos and Stephen Hawking's Universe series and makes amazing music videos out of them. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. A still more glorious dawn awaits, not a sunrise, but a galaxy rose. A morning filled with 400 billion suns, the rising of the moon.